This episode is sponsored by Free Market Kids. Join the league of families who are transforming family time into unforgettable Bitcoin learning experiences. With our Hoddle Up Bitcoin mining board game, you're not just playing. You're building bridges, creating memories, and unlocking the brilliance of the future one block at a time. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Orange Hatter. Today, you're listening to a conversation I had with Sarah. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us today on Orange Hatter. I'm so excited to jump right in and find out more about you. And I want to thank you again for your willingness to share your Bitcoin story with our audience. So can you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, my name's Sarah, and I am I have a wonderful husband and three adorable children, and they're all under seven, so seven, five, and one. So we're just starting the elementary school craziness and after school activities. <laughs> And meal planning, house management, all sorts of fun stuff like that. So I feel very busy, but very lucky and excited to do a lot of fun stuff with my days. We, my husband works as a musician, so we have kind of an interesting family schedule. And I have a small part-time job running a Bible study program for elementary school kids, but kind of a side passion project of mine. So yeah, we live in a suburb of a fun town, fun city. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is a lots of fun stuff to do, lots of fun things for families. And we stay very busy and have a lot of fun friends that we go and hang out with and chat with and play dates. And that's kind of what my life looks like week by week. I don't know. We're in a busy, but, but exciting season of life right now with our kids. Yeah. That's, that's a big transition to go from preschool into elementary school and then you have a a toddler really I mean that keeps you very busy yes and now he's mobile (laughs) he's mobile and gets into everything we have designated cabinets for him that he's allowed to rip everything out of and then we put them back because he is very active now but yeah we just got our soccer schedule for my girls And I did not realize that I am committing five nights a week, (laughs) five days a week to soccer for the next two months. So yeah, it's very fun. And that's what I keep telling myself is that it's just a season and it's very fun and I should enjoy it because some days it does feel a little overwhelming, but, but I'm only going to do it for a couple of years. I feel, you know, it's going to pass and I want to look back and enjoy it and not have missed it. So that's the mindset I'm trying to cultivate. So some days it's easier than others. I'm sure you went through a similar season. Oh, yeah. I had I have four kids under the age of five. They were like less than five years together. And I remember running from gymnastics to swimming to karate to soccer and my kids were so active that, you know, I they would do one karate class and then the, the teachers would say, oh, they can go home and sleep now. I said, no, you don't have, you have no idea. We're going from here to swimming. And then after that, they're still going to run circles around the kitchen. Oh yeah. I have, I, I'm glad that you can understand. I mean, I have friends who are like, oh, they'll nap well, or well, they'll fall asleep in the car. I'm like, my children don't sleep unless like natural sedation of like literally they have to run themselves ragged like they have to be active all day and that's and that's exciting that's great they get it from their their father I'm (laughs) I love a good nap but my girls my kids haven't napped since they were two so it's definitely they get it naturally from Jason so now that my kids wanted to nap and I used to have to sit on them literally put my legs over them to keep them still for two minutes They'll be like, I don't want to nap. I don't want. And then they will be out. 10 minutes later, they were 10 minutes. The nap was over. They were up and running circles around the kitchen again. You understand. I understand. I have hope. I have hope my toddler will be a napper. He'll be more of like in line with me. But now that he's moving, I'm seeing evidence to the contrary. (laughs) But yeah, we'll see. But like you said, it's going to, it's literally in the blink of an eye, they're going to be grown and they're going to be going different directions. That's where I am. They're transitioning into young adulthood. And, you know, the family used to be the center of their universe, right? When they get to that age, it's no longer the center of their universe. And you're like, my babies, they're just, they want to spend time with other people. (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. I, my seven-year-old says she wants to live with mommy forever. And, and she's, and she's, on, she's like, I'm, I'm, I want to get married, but then we'll just all live together. We'll all live together. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that will change. I should record you saying this now so that I can play it back for you when you're wanting to study abroad and when you're wanting to, you know, move across the world or something like that. Just, I want to be able to remind you that at one point you wanted to live with mommy forever and just feel, feel good about that because it means that she loves me and trusts me. But yeah, I, I know there is coming a day when they will spread their wings and that, and that will be, that will mean I've done a good job. That will mean that, that Jason and I, uh, my husband and I have succeeded is like you know when they can fly on their own that is success but I do know it's it's bittersweet (laughs) but you are at the perfect season for what we're about to jump into the topic of bitcoin they are young enough that you can just start prepping them and teaching them without them having their own opinions about (laughs) how crazy we are so what a great season to be in let's talk bitcoin Let's talk how how you came across the concept of Bitcoin in the first place and how did you get from that point to being so convicted that you take part in the in the ecosystem? Sure. Well, I'll tell you, I probably similar to a lot of people, I feel like the more people I meet in Bitcoin, I hear a somewhat frequent story of the COVID pandemic came and I had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> because that's what happened to my family. My my husband is a musician, as I, I mentioned, and as you can imagine, the, the shutdowns did not do very well for musicians and public performance, the arts in general. So we were in a very kind of scary situation where in the blink of an eye, our income, our projected income for the year went to zero because every gig fell off his calendar. And I do work part-time, but not nearly enough to support a family. And, you know, this was before the government started stepping in to do all these programs and stuff. There was just a lot of like fear, like, you know, but also time. And he started looking into cryptocurrencies in general, but Bitcoin specifically as the as this new technology in finance. And he started doing deep dives. Like instead of spending time practicing his craft, he started researching Bitcoin. And I remember driving one day and he was getting so excited about Bitcoin. And he was using terminology like this can solve world problems. This can fix financial inequality, like things like way bigger than just, oh, this is a new weird way to pay, you know, pay my babysitter or pay uh, for my cup of coffee or something like that. And his background before he started his career is in political science, specifically of the developing world. And when we were in college, he wanted to, he wanted to bring justice to the world and equality. And unfortunately, back in the early 2000s, he got really discouraged and depressed about the situation in the global South and how unfair the world financial system is for people. And so he kind of just like left that all behind as like, this is an unfixable problem and the world is irrevocably broken. And he threw himself into this other career. Now, fast forward 20 years, and I'm hearing him talk about this is the tool that we need. This is the tool, the financial tool that can bring financial equality, that can level the playing field for people who have been historically oppressed, people who have been historically under the thumb of these banking systems. Anyway, he, so that gave him this like passion and this fire. And which is very attractive in a husband, (laughs) you know, this like excitement. And I was like, wow, like, that's really cool. And so during the pandemic, you know, as, as I'm sure everybody did, our streaming services became our lifelines for like, you know, entertainment, but also like education in our case, because we started watching every YouTube video we could find on Bitcoin and how it changes fundamentally the structure of availability to capital that's not centralized so it's not based 
in like a government and it's not based in somebody else's control. And so as he's thinking through like the inflation problems that happened throughout the global South and all these, and then the inflation problems that happened here after the pandemic, he was like, Bitcoin fixes this. He kept saying that Bitcoin fixes this. Thanks for joining us today and learning with us today. If the discussion with our guests resonated with you and you would like to dive deeper into the world of Bitcoin, don't miss out on joining the Orange Hatter Women's Reading Club. The meetup link is in the show notes. Also, if there are women in your life whom you think would both enjoy and benefit from learning more about Bitcoin, please share Orange Hatter with them. Until next time, bye!